So a lot of you have asked about this white cabinet that I sit in front of sometimes when I do my videos. So it was actually one of Granny and Pap's first pieces of furniture when they were first married. And it, over time, when they probably when they moved out of one of their first places they lived in into a, a larger house or maybe a smaller house because they rented a lot. They rented all the time until they actually built the house here in Wilson Holler. But at some point she gave it to her, her mother, my Granny Gazzy. So that's where it was for my whole life. And I don't even think I really knew that it was Pap and Granny's. But after, they, after Granny Gazzy passed away, uh, Granny, my mother, she got it back. And she, there was also another cabinet out there that was hers, so she got it. So then she didn't really have room for both, so she ended up giving this one to me. And it's one of my most, I just treasure it. It's not that it's that sturdy or that well made when you're really up close to it. It's kind of, it was probably one of the cheaper models of the day. But I still love it just because it was Granny and Paps. Now what I should do is I should put dishes in it, right? This is kind of what it's made for, but instead I've kind of got odds and ends and some of the treasures that I've gained over the years. Well today I've been cleaning it out and I thought maybe you'd like to hear some of the stories about some of the treasures that I keep inside it. I'll start off with up on top. I won't show you everything, but I do just want to show you. This was made by Minnie Atkins. Now someday I need to tell you the story. Uh, Mike Norris, and you can look this up for yourself, but he wrote a wonderful, writes wonderful children's rhymes, think of Mother Goose, but in the Appalachian language, in the Appalachian subjects, they are amazing and wonderful. And his books, the illustrations in them, are of carvings done by Minnie Atkins, so I really treasure that. And I'll have to read you some of those poems, some of it, the nursery rhymes is really what they are. They are just wonderful, have that wonderful Appalachian language. So this was a milk bottle that Matt found for me. I love old bottles and old jars. This one is really cool because it's the Edwood Farm Dairy. It was a dairy up in Andrews, North Carolina. And it's, it is kind of cracked right there, but I love it. And actually, you know, and we've cleaned it with Clorox before I tell you the story of where it come from. But it was Matt was working on a sewer line and they were digging out and with a with a uh, back hole or a dozer or whatever. And he happened to see something glinting, so he stopped him and he jumped down in the ditch and he found this because he knew his wife would love it. And I do one of my favorite things. Both the story of Matt thinking of me while being on a job somewhere. Um, but also because it's a piece of my, my county's history, so I love that. So some of the more unique, odd things that I have in there, you can see this little lady, and you can see she's broke. Her Both her arms are missing. Her whole bottom half is missing. And so why in the world do I have her? Well, several years ago on a hunting trip down in Georgia, Matt, where he hunts, like lots of other places when you're out in the wilderness, you'll find old home places, or, or even if you don't even see the home place, you can find signs of people that were once there. So he, he seen her sticking up out of the dirt, and he found her and brought her home. So I, I just love her. I mean, even though she's not all there, uh, she has a beautiful little face. If you can see it, just lovely. But many years ago, probably close to 20 now, maybe, um, he found this little dog down there. It's more, there's more of it there left, so he'll stand up. But in the same way, he's seen it sticking up out of the dirt one time on a hunting trip and thought of me and brought it home. I'm a very easy to please wife, aren't I? If you bring, <laughs> bring trash home to me. Um, this is something that I really love. Um, I'll take these two out. I, this was Granny Gazzy's, and I, I was really little when she gave it to me, and I kept it for years, and I, I thought it was like a, it looks like a bed, maybe a bedstead, so I used to play with it with my Barbies I, uh, somehow, and just different things. I had it sitting in my room, but I was grown and married before I realized what it really is. I seen it in a book, or I would have not known. It's to put your matches in, so it would sit in her kitchen when she had her wood cook stove, and it was handy there for her to her start her fires. So that's what it really is, but I just love it. It's just cheap, just plastic, because it was hers. And someone sent me these lovely, these are fire starters, but gosh, they're way too pretty to, to actually use where they've split back the wood. So someone sent me those. And that often happens, people sending me stuff. So people will send me like pigs because of the blind pig and the acorn, which I love all the pigs. This pig actually is one of my favorites. It, Miss Cindy got this one for me and gifted it. It's just so unique. And then on the inside, I have some, those are dried uh, cayenne peppers. I see some other seeds down in there. I have seeds stuck everywhere. 
This is something that I especially love. My Aunt Faye, her and her husband Woodrow, um, is one Granny's oldest sister. They really um, stayed a lot with Granny Gazzy. So most all the times I ever seen them, they were at Granny Gazzy's house. That's just where they stayed. But they lived fairly close. And one time, for some reason, I was me and Granny went to their house instead of to Granny Gazzy. And in their living room, Faye had uh, these built-in shelves that were really pretty, and she had knickknacks all over them. And she told me that she wanted me to have this, so she gave me that that day. And um, I don't think it's valuable or anything, but boy, it's one of my treasures, though, because I just remember how special I felt when Faye gave me that. Sweet. So because I love old bottles, a lot of the place we find, me and the girls, we love to dig in old dumps. So in days gone by, of course, people didn't go to the landfill or to their local green dumpsters. They had a dump somewhere on their property. And we love to dig in those dumps. Most of the stuff you find is broken or rusted or whatever. But sometimes you find bottles, you know, that are not or barely chipped or something. Um, and we're lucky enough to have some on our property, but also sometimes friends know that about us and they'll invite us and say, I found a dump on my on our land. Would you come? You want to come and look at it? Because they don't care nothing about it, but they know we do. But because of that, people know that I love bottles. I have these uh, two, and I think there's another one somewhere that a friend of ours, dear friend here in Brasstown, Tom, he kept, he was working on a job, and so he, he saw these old bottles that nobody wanted, and, and he thought, I know who would want them, Tipper. So that's a really great memory. I was teaching, and he brought them to me in my cooking class. I thought, well, what's he coming? What's Tom coming to see me about? Well, because he had a wonderful gift of bottles for me. I love those. Well, sometimes when we find bottles like that out and about, they because they've been laying in the woods for, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, they have stuff growing inside them or they're filled with dirt. So sometimes we wash them up and clean them up, and sometimes we leave them. We leave them just like they were. So I have no clue. That's like a, a off of just a ballpoint point pen. I don't know why that's in there, but I'm just going to leave it. Leave it in there. It wasn't in there when we found it, I'm sure. One of the girls or me stuck it in there at some point. So this one's broke around the edges, but still, isn't it neat to think about all that living matter that was in there? Kind of like some kind of moss and some dirt, some roots. I just love that. Here's one that I found up the creek uh, here where we live. And it's a child's little teacup. It's just plastic. So it was definitely someone in my family's. And I didn't even get the dirt out of it. But I just love it. It's just the daintiest little thing. Just so sweet. I used to have marbles in it. I don't know what's happened to all my marbles. We have all sizes. And I mean, we have in the basement like an entire shelf of, of old bottles and things. And l someone uh, that reads my blog, two, two someones, very nice couple, they sent me their bottle collection. They had been collectors for years and then they sold them on, you know, eBay and different things like that. And, and they just had so many that, and that was a hard thing to kind of sell when you think about shipping bottles. So they gifted me and Corey and Katie with their bottle collection and we just love them. And theirs are so pristine and clean and nice, not like some of our dirty ones, um, but, but we really love them. A few years ago, Granny and I uh, got in this kick of buying these. This one's, the water's evaporated. I need to figure out how to, I don't even know if I can. I don't guess I can add no water. Um, but she got these and bought a bunch of them and give them to me. So on that side, you can see Corey and Katie and Matt. On this side, Corey and Katie in their little gowns. Um, there's one when they're a little bit older there. And then on that side is them and Granny being silly, it looks like. In the same way that people uh, send me pigs, they sometimes send me acorns. Well, these actually were with the girls. Uh, they're felted on the bottom, and then they have the cute, have a real acorn top. They got them on Etsy, I think, one year for Christmas. That was one of my presents. Aren't those just precious? More recently, someone that watches my videos and is an amazing wood turner sent me this wonderful wood turned acorn isn't it beautiful it's just so pretty but then it's even better because it opens so once you open it guess what was in it yes a pig <laughs> isn't that the cutest thing ever i just love it another kind of knickknack that's really precious to me this was miss cindy's grandmother so very very old 
her name was Dolly. I never knew her, but because of the generosity of Miss Cindy, I've ended up with several of her treasures like this, uh, and some of her photos and her postcard collection and all that, so I really, really treasure that. Here's something that I especially love. Katie made it for me. So when the girls were little, we would gather, we'd get a sheet and put it over the kitchen table and we'd gather paint and wire and sticks and whatever we found and glue and we would create is what they called it. Mama, let's create. So this is something that she's made. You can see she's just made it. She's got some glue and some wire, but she made a cross. And isn't that just the loveliest thing? I've had it for years. It's been a long time ago that she made it. When we're out hunting those bottles, one thing that we love to find are snuff jars. So in days gone by, snuff came in glass jars like this, and they had a metal metal lid like that. And that's how people would buy their snuff, that used snuff. Well, then once you're done with the snuff, it makes the perfect little drinking glass. And we have a lot of these that we drink out of. Um, one of the my favorite finds over the years was uh, we were digging at a place up the creek, and uh, I found like six... Uh, snuff jars all in a line like you know three here and three here and I thought how could they have all been right there together but then we decided well whoever set them down there either in a bag or a box had set them there and then over time of course it deteriorated and and faded away leaving the jars so those were and I loved it because I knew they were probably my big grandmothers so I really loved those because of those of being so willing to go dig in dumps and, and hunt for a refuge, hunt through people's stuff, we often find pieces that we just can't bear not to keep. Maybe that was a piece of a plate. Um, that was inside of a cannon jar, you can see. There's also some, let me put those down. And then some, that's like was an arrowhead. You can see the little chip there that someone's found. See, my only problem with all the things that I've found over the years, I so wish that we had took the time to write down exactly where we found it and where it come from. Some of these I've had since way before I was married because I had this little thing in my room at Granny and Pap's, so I remember that. And then some of them maybe are, are more recent. Lots of bits of pieces of plate. Katie's working on, or has worked, two or three times over the years. That's just a little piece of glass. Um, someone suggested years ago, now that one was a really pretty plate. You can see the little scalloped edges and then the back side of it. But suggested that when we find stuff like this, she could make jewelry out of it and call it old home place jewelry. And she made a few things. There's a jack, one of my jacks from when I was little. I want to step on that one. That was a really pretty one. Now, Katie has a wonderful story. She needs to tell it um, about finding a piece of pottery, a piece of plate. She's got a great story. She needs to tell it. I should tell her that she needs to tell that to you. There's another arrowhead. So all kinds of little bits and pieces. See, I don't even know. I just wish I'd wrote down where they all come from, but I didn't. It's too late now. Another little bitty arrowhead. So this is a unique one, and I actually made it. So you can see all the shell work that I did on this one, kind of on the top, made a design. I've, one of my shells is broke though over the years. So years ago, I love these little ones down through there. Me and Corey and Katie were out going to yard sales, and we went to this yard sale over in Martins Creek, and it was this place, we'd, a house we'd never been to before. And there was this lady, and she had been a, I think she'd been an art teacher, if I remember right, but she was an artist, beautiful paintings. But she was trying to make herself part with a lot of her art stuff. So a lot of it was shells, and they were not just her. She had created stuff with them over the years. This is an older woman. A lot of them were her mother's shells. Her mother was really into, and I can't, some of you probably know, there's a term for at people who create things with shells who do artwork but she she when she found out we were kind of creative people she just wanted us to have it all and if I remember right I think she didn't even make us pay for half of the stuff that we took but a lot of it was shells so this is kind of my uh, my main piece that I made with it so she had all these amazing shells she had some of them in jars like this look at that look at the amazing little tiny shells in there so some of them were in large jars. Some of them were in these really 
just the, I would have wanted the jars, not even if I didn't want the shells, but in these little glass jars about that big that had a screw lid, some of them were green, some of them were clear. They were just so attractive and all different colors of shells. I don't know if they've been dyed or something in, in days gone, you know, a long time ago with that kind of artwork. They were just lovely. And every time we clean out the basement, we think about getting rid of those shells. And I'm always the one that's like, no, we better just hold on to them, even though nobody's really creating with them now. It's just some kind of treasure that I can't seem to let go. This is a little, a little piece that Miss Cindy gifted me. I think she picked it up like at a yard sale or something like that. And I had used to have my rings and stuff in it. I don't have anything in it right now. But the neat part is it was actually handmade. And the neat part of it is that it was made by a Wilson. <laughs> so maybe one of my relatives, huh? So that was really cute. Another pig. I have lots of pigs from people. I need to put that one inside something like the acorn one. So this is an, um, I think Katie gave me this one. This is a napkin ring. So you put the napkin in here and it was made by one of the Brasstown carvers years ago. It's a billy goat. You can see the, they see his horns and kind of his beard. And so on the bottom, the initials tell me, Katie said it was either made by Carmen Fleming or Clarence Fleming, both great carvers, as you can see. Makes me wish I had the whole set of it though. It's funny how some things that you treasure can kind of bring back the same feelings that you had. So this is one of them. This is just a, a, a black, it's just metal, but somebody's painted this lovely painting on it. So I can remember uh, when the girls were young and me and Matt were first married, uh, we were really went through some tough times, you know, and I had to really think about every dime that I spent on anything. Not that we're wealthy uh, by no means right now, but still things were harder in those days. And I can't, I think I got this at a, this little old antique place, not even there anymore in Murphy. And I really had to struggle with myself that day. And that's what that, when I see this, that's what I remember. Like I really wanted it, but should I really spend that extra money? Should I, should I? But I did. <laughs> All these years later, I'm glad I did because I still think it's just as lovely. But it reminds me of that feeling of kind of like worrying over every single dime that I spent. So when I was talking about people sending me stuff, people are so kind. Uh, and from the, all the years of writing on the Blind Pig and the Acorn and now the subscribers here on YouTube, just so kind to send me stuff. I so appreciate every little, little letter, little postcard, little item, whatever it is. It just touches my heart and really overflows my, my feelings. It's just such a, such a joy that people want to share with us. And I just love that. This was something, years ago, there was a lady that read The Blind Pig and the Acorn all the time. She Sadly, she had cancer and she passed away, so she's no longer here. But um, she sent me some of her stuff once she knew she wasn't gonna get better and she was kind of downsizing, getting rid of stuff she sent me. So this was one of the things she sent me. I would have never figured out what it was. It's very old, you can see kind of the feet. I love this, you can kind of see the marks of that glaze on the bottom, isn't that great? Anyway, but what it was, if she hadn't have told me, is a chicken waterer. So you would put the water down in there, and then the chicks, once you turned it down, then they could drink right there. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that just the neatest thing? So that was one of the treasures. And she was just a dear, sweet lady. Um, one time, one of those years during that time that she was reading The Blind Pig and the Acorn, it was a year when the frost killed all the apple blooms uh, in this area, and I was kind of bemoaning the fact that there wouldn't be any apples that year. And she got a friend, because she was very sick, and they drove hours. She bought me apples, and they drove hours, and they brought them to me. I can't hardly even say it without crying. I, I worked at the college then and part of my job when I first started the college was I was the college receptionist so I sat at this desk so I could see out in the parking lot and I thought would she really come well they really you know I didn't know but she did she come and I remember going out into the parking lot and putting those apples from her car into my car it was just the, the sweetest kindest thing ever so sweet so this is another one of our our bottles we have several different sizes of these that we've collected over the years love all of those and these flowers remind me of this piece so this is just an old you can see it's been glued back together here it was like a, a flower for you to arrange flowers in so my whole life at granny's it had like that green 
forest uh, florist foam in the bottom and it had some of granny's crocheted flowers stuck into it at some point she quit using it and then when i was married first married and had nothing for my house i and i love old stuff so i was always going to granny's asking her if i could have this or this and i found this under the bathroom sink and i said can i have that and she said why yeah and then she told me it was actually my pap's grandmother it was my big grandma so it was carrie's um, belong to her and even though it's kind of broke and all that I still just love it I've got paint stuck in it now little tubes of paint this was kind of my crafting cabinet and then of course I love all the things like the crocheted flowers that granny's made over the years so I had these in a jar so most of the things that I call treasures you can see are not really wouldn't be worth anything to anybody else uh, but they just all have some kind of special meaning this is a beautiful rock Katie painted for me y'all know that she loves rocks so that's just a creek rock but isn't it vibrant and pretty she done that a long time ago and I've had it kept it in here a lot of the ones they painted I have on the porch but I really love this one and then things like this that granny made she made this little thing just to go on any kind of cannon jar and this is a cannon jar i've used for a long time but it's got a chip out of the it's not a real old one it's one of the reproduction blue ones but it's got a chip so the last time i tried to use it it did not seal and i was trying to figure out why and then i was like because there's a chip in it that's why so but granny's little cozy makes it makes it look nice So as I was saying, mostly the old cannon jars and the bits and pieces, especially the stuff that we found, the broken tidbits, um, the things Miss Cindy shared with me from her grandmother, all those different things really wouldn't mean anything to anybody else. But those are the things that I care most about when I think about material things. Of course, not the things I care most about when you think about your faith and your family and your health and your what you know that your your loved ones all that but when I think of material things those are the things that pleases me like those little things that Matt brought back from Georgia uh, he I like those better than if he'd brought me a diamond ring that's just the kind of person I am I know I'm kind of odd like that but I hope that you've enjoyed kind of peeking into my my cabinet that so many of you have asked about and I hope that you'll share some of what do you treasure are you like Katie do you pick up a rock everywhere you go um are you like us in that you like old bottles and uh, pieces of glass and just even holding an old piece of glass you think hmm wonder what this was in and wonder how it got broke or wonder who the first person that bought it was or did it sit on a shelf or all those wonderful things so please share what what treasures you keep and please continue to drop back by often and help me celebrate Appalachia